If you are often taking wildlife pictures in the forest or during twilight, you will know the problem of not having enough light on the sensor and needing to increase the ISO and in the end not having the best image quality and quite some noise in your images. For years I have been using specific software to reduce the noise in my images. This was a Topaz Denoise AI for a while and then last autumn uh, Topaz announced Photo AI, kind of an autopilot that should combine uh, Denoise AI, Sharpen AI and Gigapixel AI. And in the beginning I was not very happy because you didn't have so many options to to, or so many parameters to set, the quality was not as good as I was hoping for and I actually switched to DxO Pure Raw 3 this spring. But now Topaz has announced Photo AI 2 version 2 and I downloaded and bought this software and I need to say I was quite impressed with the results. So in this video I want to show you the workflow of Topaz Photo AI version 2 compared to DxO Pure Raw 3 and then of course we will have a detailed look um, for three images about the final result, how well was it uh, reducing the noise and still preserving the details or not. Um, here comparing Photo AI version 2 with DxO Pure Raw 3 and also the AI noise reduction um, option that you have within Lightroom because I have been asked quite often, is it still necessary to purchase these additional products or can Lightroom do the job just as well? So let's start with this picture of a mod mod that I took very early in the morning. I was on my way to some salines to take some pictures of some shorebirds that were there and I wanted to be there at sunrise and I took these pictures on the way there so it was before sunrise um, below a tree so rather dark as you can see with the exifs I was shooting my 600mm f4 wide open at 1 40th of a second this was the longest I felt kind of comfortable hand holding and still I was at 20,000 ISO and if we zoom in you can see that the picture is indeed sharp so the 40th of a second was fine but there is quite some noise. Um, I turned the noise reduction off here in Capture One. If you work with Lightroom it's very similar. What I will do now is open it in Photo AI so I'm doing a right click um, open with Topaz Photo AI if this is not appearing, you might need to add this in, in the settings of Capture One. And now the photo is loading. This autopilot is kind of applying some lens correction, trying to detect the subject, identify how much noise there is and how much it should therefore denoise the image, which algorithm to use, if sharpening is necessary and so on. Um, you basically now see here the preview and it looks not so good at the moment and this is something that happens sometimes with photo AI that you might check a bit for different models. Um, since we have quite some noise here I will go for the raw strong version 2. Look how this looks. And then the raw strong version 1. And I think first of all we need to reduce the settings a bit. Both the de-blurring or kind of a type of sharpening I guess and the noise reduction overall I think was way too aggressive. And I can switch back to the new version, the version 2 and do the same. Uh, still I honestly think the old one is doing a better job even though I do lose some kind of details here so I will really put the strength to the minimum to the set, uh, setting 1. And then I will also look at the sharpening. Um, here it detected the subject of the mod mod automatically. Um, if I quickly zoom out a bit to 50% and I hover over this subject, you can see that it also identified some other parts. Here it's not a big deal, but I just want to mention you can correct this if you click on edit subject. And now you can, uh, you have a brush, you can subtract you can uh, change the size and the feathering which just defines how soft the brush is and now I can just erase the parts I don't need. Um, you can also see that some parts of the tail were not picked up correctly so um, I could add this. One way I could do this is just with a regular brush or I can try this so-called AI brush 
AI brush. Um, the problem is here, it, if, you, if I hover over it, it's really not finding it. Um, it works better along the branch, although not perfect. I think once there is so much noise in the image, the um, AI is a bit confused by the noise. This is what I assume happens. So I will go to the regular brush, go to a smaller size and just quickly paint this over. Doesn't need to be perfectly uh, done perf perfectly, just to have it a bit better. And then I will click apply and the program is already warning me. Now the autopilot needs to run again, which might take a few seconds. I will go back to my 200% zoom setting to see better what happened here. And it's clearly over sharpened. So I will put the sharpening uh, down a lot. And you also have here different uh, algorithms again that you can use for the sharpening. Uh, I usually just toggle a bit between different ones to see which one fits best for the particular image. I think the standard version 2 put to a lower setting is maybe better. And you have more options here as you can see. Um, some of them like the adjust lightning and balance color are not available in RAW yet. This will come in the future so I cannot use them. The upscale here is the kind of the predecessor of no, sorry, the successor of Gigapixel AI. So for enlarging images, I don't need this here. And if I go to the settings, you will also see that there is options for the autopilot. If you, um, basically, which kind of sub subject it should look for. Um, then the Gigapixel, I never use it, the upscaling. Then the noise reduction, the non-RAW, I don't care so much. But for the RAW, I can decide from which threshold on it should even start noise reduction. And then which model, if it, at the moment I have it automatic, but I can also say if I like 95% of the cases prefer the normal version 2, that I should directly apply this one. And here I can uh, let um, Photo AI know which kind of, um, or how strong the model should be applied, what the parameters are. Um, the same for the sharpening. And it's very important to know that this is um, only a, like a preset. And basically once this is how it will look like when you load the image, and then you can of course uh, still switch the model, adjust the sliders and so on. This is only there to save you some time if you know that in general you prefer a rather weak denoising or a specific model. So for now here, I'm quite fine with the result. So I will save the image. Uh, it should uh, keep the same name, but add a topaz in the end. Uh, store it in the original folder and preserve input format means preserve raw. Of course, we cannot save this as a CR3, as a Canon raw file. So it will be converted in a DNG, um, like this kind of Adobe raw if you want. And you can see that thereby the size increases quite dramatically. It increases from 37 megabytes, it was a C raw file, to 270 megabytes. Um, this is saving, which might take a minute. Once it's done, I can click on this folder. I see it in Finder and I can just simply drag it to Lightroom. This will open the import prompt. I can select the image, choose Add to Catalog because I don't need to move the image anywhere because it's already at the proper location. Click Import One Image. Um, I can go back to my test collection here where I have the images. You can ignore the one in yellow. They are the ones for, that I did before uh, for my German YouTube channel. But here is the result for now. What I would change here in the Refine tab is again remove the sharpening because we already applied some sharpening in Photo AI. So we don't want more. If we do a quick comparison, <laughs> the noise is basically gone. We lost a bit of detail to be honest, um, but it's not too bad. I now want to do a comparison with DxO um, Pure R3. So again, open width and DxO Pure R3. Um, it's again very similar in Lightroom. There you just need to go over the uh, plugins and select it as a plugin. I will process this now. Um, I usually don't choose the lens softness as a correction because it um, I feel it over sharpens in many situations. Uh, again, I could choose the file naming and everything. I keep it as it is and it should directly export it to Capture One. Um, yeah, since I already did this before for my German channel, it's um, asking me what to do. And I said it should create a second file. 
This can also happen, for example, if you do one without lens corrections and then you feel the image could use a bit more sharpness due to a second run um, with the lens corrections applied. You can also use this unique, use unique name and it will create a second file and you can delete the one you don't like after. So this is fairly quick with these 45 megapixel files. It's finished now. Um, and as you can see in the background, Capture One opened. So same procedure. I just import the pictures, but don't move it anywhere. Um, it should also be in my test folder here. Um, and very important here uh, for this DXO file here is also to turn off the sharpening of Lightroom or Capture One. And well, if we compare uh, Photo AI and DXO Pure Raw, you can see that Photo AI actually removed more of the noise, but it also killed some fine details here in the back of the head or here on the belly where DxO Pure did a better job of preserving them, but the noise levels are a bit higher. Personally, if I need to choose between the two, I would rather go for the DxO Pure Raw 3 result because I can live with this tiny bit of noise, but I'm happy to have a bit more details in some of the low contrast areas of the feathers of the bird, of the mot mot. But to be honest, both did a very fine job if we uh, quickly compare it back to the to the original image, how this looked like. So I'm happy I would not maybe not print this like three meters on my wall in my room. I don't have space anyway. But uh, like for an Instagram picture or even for YouTube or even as a background, a 4K wall, um, like wallpaper for your background, it will do the job perfectly fine. As promised before, let's look at three other pictures that I developed with uh, the Lightroom AI noise removal, DxO Pure R3 and Photo AI. So the first one is this one of this goshawk that I already covered in a video that I did earlier this year. And I wanted to retake this example here because um, when I did the video in uh, spring, I was not happy with the quality that Topaz Photo AI gave me. And I wanted to see if now maybe it managed to catch up with DxO Pure Raw 3 or not. So let's first have a look at the original file and you can see it's sharp, but it's quite noisy. I was shooting in 10,000 ISO because it was again before sunrise and there is quite some color noise and also luminance noise. If you run it through Lightroom noise reduction, the noise is basically gone, but there is also quite some details missing now. It looks a bit soft and a bit washed out. I, it's hard to explain, but yeah, I don't like the look so much. And for Lightroom, you can choose how much denoising you want to do. I always put the slider so far that the noise levels were kind of comparable to what I got from DxO Pure Raw 3 or Photo AI 2. So let's move to the XO Pure Raw 3. Here we have similar noise levels than in Lightroom. Um, maybe a tiny bit higher, but still very, very low. But we have lots more, lot more detail and still no over sharpening or any issues. So this looks much better in my opinion. And if we move to Topaz Photo AI 2, here the noise levels are a slight slightly lower than DxO Pure Raw 3, more comparable with Lightroom or even lower than Lightroom I would say. And we still have a lot of sharpness. I think that the fine details actually look better than in Pure Raw 3 and far better than in Lightroom. So in this image it looks like yes Topaz managed to catch up. The Photo AI uh, version is my clear favorite. If we move to the next picture we have a songbird here in the forest of Costa Rica and it was a rather dark environment. I will zoom in a bit more that you can see the details even better. And while Adobe Lightroom managed to get rid of the noise quite well, it really also erased quite some details. This image doesn't, I really don't like how the feathers looks. It looks a bit artificial and really not very good. You lose details, so I'm not a big fan of this result. DxO Pure Raw 3 uh, has dealt with the noise quite fine but we still have a lot of feather details this looks very good and i, I actually am amazed how well this looks if we go to topaz photo ai 2 the noise levels are maybe slightly lower than in the xo pure or 3 but i feel that the feathers while looking better than in lightroom they do have some small sharpening artifacts so i think here the xo pure or 3 is the winner for me as I mentioned earlier, Photo AI was supposed to replace Gigapixel AI, Denoise AI, and Sharpen AI. 
So I also wanted to test a picture that was not completely sharp. And unfortunately, I do have quite some pictures like this. And in this case, I went for this hummingbird that was flying towards a or landing on a flower. I was not expecting this and I was quickly just um, turning around with my 600mm f4. Um, took a burst of shots when it landed. Um, but the shutter speed of 1 800th of a second was maybe already a bit too long. But the bigger problem is that the eye out of focus uh, went for the flower instead of the hummingbird. Um, and you can see that the flower is fairly sharp but the humming hummingbird is a bit blurry. So I was curious if any of the software would allow me to get more details out of the bird. So if we look at Adobe Lightroom, um, it doesn't seem like it got any more details out. I would say it's pretty much the same, maybe even a tiny bit softer. Um, so I was not very happy here. Then I went to DxO Pure Raw 3 and here you have different options for the lens corrections, for the sharpness. I tried several ones and this one is the one I liked most. And I feel like you see a bit more details in the hummingbird, definitely, um, but it's still not really sharp and we see that the flower is already a bit over um, sharpened. There are some artifacts, some hard lines that I don't like so much. And here I think is where Topaz Photo AI has the advantage because you can refine the mask, you can select specific sharpening with different algorithms and here it looks much better. If we start with the flower, there is no over sharpening. It's a bit sharper in the original than in the original, but it's still fine. It's not over sharpened for my, for my taste. But the hummingbird, the, the head looks so much better. We have a plenty of detail that we didn't really see in the original file, also around the eye. And this is one of the cases where I would say this software kind of saved my day or saved a shot. I think three, four years ago I would have just deleted the shot because it's blurry and now I have a shot that I can actually use uh, even as a wallpaper. Um, maybe I will not print it four meters wide in my apartment but um, it's something that's definitely usable for like medium-sized prints, for wallpapers and so on. So I was very impressed what photo I delivered here. So which one is the software I liked most? Um, I think I will continue actually using both since I already own them and both have their strengths and weaknesses. So if I come back from Costa Rica, maybe I selected 100 pictures that could use some denoising, then I just prefer the workflow of DxO because I can just select these 100 images, right click, open them in DxO Puro and start a batch process and after maybe 45 minutes or an hour this is done and this time I can have lunch or whatever. And the, the, the results will be very good. If I work with Photo AI, you saw maybe that the autopilot pilot is often not producing the best results. Um, you can get more out of the picture, but you really need to play with the sliders. And if you want to denoise 100 images, this, at least for me, it's not feasible. However, if you have some specific images that might lack some sharpness, Photo AI can really, really do a very fantastic job, but you need to invest this one or two extra minutes per image. So obviously you can do the same as me and buy both products, but if you want to save some money, I think one of them should be fine for most of the situations. And as you saw, the results are quite similar with some small differences. I think it's more important which workflow suits you better. And there I can just encourage you to try the uh, free trial that you have. It's for 30 days. You can I put a link in the video description. You can download the software from there. You don't need to edit, enter a credit card or anything. It's just after 30 days, the software will stop working if you don't buy it. And if you do buy it, I would be very happy if you would use the affiliate links below. It would just help me to support the channel and you don't pay anything else. Um, also in comparison with Lightroom, I think it's still worth it if you have a lot of uh, low light shots to use this software. Um, but again, just try it, make up your own mind. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.